turn now to our top story. The Archbishop of Canterbury will use his Christmas message to speak about terrorism, warning of an Islamic State apocalypse and branding Islamist extremists as a herald of today. The contributing editor of Christian Today, Ruth Bloodhill, is uh, with us now. Hello. Merry Christmas. Thank you for coming in this morning. What are we... He's certainly not pulling his punches, is he? What, what do we make of what he's got to say? He's telling it as it is, which is about the devastating effects of ISIS, Islamic State, in the Middle East, particularly on the Christian population. And, you know, in Iraq alone, numbers of Christians have gone down from over 1.5 million to under 300,000, possibly fewer than uh, 200,000, maybe even fewer than that. And um, the, it, the apocalyptic end time theology of Islamic State is not very widely understood, but what he's doing here is putting it onto the front pages and saying we've got to understand what it is that drives these people. And really, it's, a, it's an almost an end times theology behind the drive by Islamic State to... Um, to wreak destruction and havoc throughout the world. It's quite a political rather than uh, a religious sermon though, isn't it? Well, it is political in that it, certainly when talking about phenomena such as Daesh or IS, you can't really separate politics from religion. Mm -hmm. And likewise in this country, of course, the church is established, so the Church of England. So you, again, politics and religion can't really be separated, especially at times like this. And I think what he does is tie in very well with what the Queen is saying okay. in terms of the light of the world and John's Gospel. And his message fits in well with that because he's drawing on um, Christian tradition really, but he's calling it a false apocalypse. He's saying that what they're preaching is false, it's not true. And what IS is, is doing must be confronted, it, mu it must be stopped. What impact does his speech tend to have? I mean, we've only had two, haven't we? He didn't deliver um, a sermon last year, a speech last year, because he was poorly. Uh, so we had one uh, in 2013. What impact do you envisage this having on fellow Christians? I think it will have a massive impact, not just on fellow Christians, but on people of all faiths and none. And I think it will have an impact on government on um, people, that a lot of people listen, it doesn't need me to say that a lot of people listen to what Justin Welby says. He's an incredibly powerful and visionary speaker. He's, he's a prophet for our times, really. He's the right leader for the Church of England in this time. And he delivers a powerful, strong message. And I think what he's saying is what people want him to say, what people want to hear, and what the world needs to hear because I do believe he's telling the truth. Um, and you mentioned Her Majesty in her speech, which we'll hear at three o'clock this afternoon. To what extent is there any collaboration between the two? Well, I can only speculate about mm. that. Oh, do. <laughs> I think it would be surprising if they hadn't, um, if their advisers perhaps hadn't discussed their individual messages, because especially on this occasion, there, there does seem to be such a perfect um, synchronization of them. The Queen is talking about faith and it's really a message of hope and um, explicitly quoting the Gospel as she does shows how deeply she is rooted in her own faith and I think that her message is one that will really resonate in homes throughout the country when we see it on the television later today. And then the Archbishop is, a, is as, as we've heard, a more apocalyptic message and one, you know, that it's not really reassuring, it's one that's slightly alarming. So come back together, they, I think they strike a perfect balance for this Christmas day. We can't pretend all is peace and love in the world today because it isn't. Just look at the horrific stories coming out of places like Iraq. Mm -hmm. you know, girls um, as young as seven are bleeding to death after multiple rapes. The, all the beheadings we've seen, the absolute unspeakable atrocities being perpetrated in the name of a religion that is being distorted and taken falsely by a terror group. The Archbishop is right to bring this to the fore and to make of this what he has. Um, but it's only if people like him speak out and call the world to action that something really will get done to stop this. Okay, we appreciate you taking the time to come in this morning. Thank you very much indeed, thank you.